Thank you all for joining me. Uh, my name is Amin Soleimani. I'm here presenting Women, Life, Freedom, Web3 Meets the Iranian Revolution on behalf of Iran Unchained. <clears throat> Trigger warning, brutal violence and blasphemy. They still execute people for that in Iran. <clears throat> Her name was Massa Amini. She was stopped by Iran's morality police for showing her hair, and she was beaten to death in their custody on September 16th, 2022. Her death triggered our revolution. Her name is our code. This is Nika Shakorami. She was standing on a car and burning her headscarf at a protest. She was inspired by Massa Amini's death and then she was chased by the morality police and was missing for 10 days before her parents found her body in a morgue. They were not allowed to autopsy her body, which is usually the case when there was rape and or if the organs were sold. The official said that she fell off a roof despite her nose and skull being bashed in. Her body was forcibly buried far away to prevent a large funeral gathering in Tehran, and her parents were arrested at her funeral and then forced to give public confessions on the national television that Nika killed herself jumping off the roof. So Iranians are risking their lives protesting to send a message, and that message is that they do not want the Islamic Republic. So. They reject the Islamic values of being anti-women, which sees them primarily as breeding stock and justifies executing homosexuals and prostitutes. Anti-life, which uh, promotes child martyrdom and execution without due process. And anti-freedom, which it's a system where the government has full authoritarian control. On the left, we have this chart. This is a recent poll of people in Iran and how they would vote in a referendum if they had the choice. And 80% of the people in Iran would vote no to the Islamic Republic. This number is up 10% from about two and a half years ago. A lot of people were in the middle and then the middle hollowed out, and now they are also firmly against the Islamic Republic. Um, on the right, we have another interesting poll. Uh, specifically, I thought was interesting was the discrepancy between male and female in the punishment for the officials responsible for the violence perpetrated by the regime. Uh, women are about twice as likely as men to prefer revolutionary executions for the members of the Islamic regime that were responsible for the violence. Note, this is not the death penalty only if the fair court reaches a verdict. This is the execution revolutionary style. Be our voice. The Iranian government shuts down the internet. People inside of Iran can't communicate. And when they do try to speak up, they risk their lives to do so. There are 15,000 Iranians in jail, including most of the leaders, athletes, professors, musicians, artists, community organizers. And so it falls upon Iranians outside of Iran to be their voice. All right, now we're going to play some rap. All right, I already have this open. Okay. So this is a rap song by a rapper named Tumaj. The song is called Shalog, which means whip. And I'm going to play it for you now. Boy, Nasli, never turn it down. We have it. Nasli. 
نیست یه نسل شیک یه نسل تیز یه نسل تازه نمیرخصه با سازی با ساز ما نمی سازه نسلی که جواب سلام فرماندتم نداده به شما بی اراده میگم به اونا نسل کامل زن و مردیم کنارم این یه اختاریه داره گشت ارشادتون گیره پشت ترافیک ماه بفرست چیره خارت اینجا هزار هزار بی نقابه کف خیابونیم ولی ببین صدا میره تا به چی راستانا شناسی که اعلامی داد این بار موی آزاد میرخصه توی بازی باد قانونی که پا میذاره رو تو بذار زیر پاد با اختیار زندگی کن بگو هجابی هجاب هجابی هجاب 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 هجابی هجاب هجابی هجاب 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 هجابی هجاب با اختیار زندگی کن بگو هجابی هجاب هجابی هجاب 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 هجابی هجاب اونه که دست تحقیقی ران وقتش پس بدی موی آزاد میده نقش دیگه تمام دوران بردگی تاوان آره ولی باشه میدیم میسوزیم ولی ستاره میشیم نه قانون و نه آیه دین آزادی رو توی تاله دیم هجابی هجاب 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 هجابی هجاب هجابی هجاب 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 هجابی هجاب یه نسل شیک یه نسل تیز یه نسل تازه نمیرخصه با سازی با ساز ما نمیسازه ما از زندگی این تو سری نیست دیگه به زور نمیرم زیر این رو سری هیست آهای دشمنای چل ساله مردم ایران دیگه بختش بفهم این زرمون در این نیست به قول شیرزن گرگانی تو این لچک و این قوانین و ارگانی موها من شلاق بیشن تو صورت تالا خود دانی هر بده بکش جربه خودتو برام اسلحه بکش من تا جهنم و میخوام بدون شما تو هم اسم تو بنویس بارا سردره بهش تو کی هستی جانی یه مزدور سپایی یه بسیجی مخلصی که نزدیک پایانی خیلی دوست داری که منو خاک کنی از ترس ولی خواب میبینی میشم واسد کابوس هر شب این اشواری که روز سرم اصله شده حالا هر شده تو بخون بول از آلوی بدبخ هجابی هجاب هجابی هجاب 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 So I should have mentioned that all of the scenes in that video are from the last six months inside of Iran. And the reason why I wanted to show it to you is to give you an idea of the cultural transformation that's been happening inside the country. Uh, this is Tumaj Salehi who sang the song. He's pretty popular. And unfortunately, he is being currently tortured in prison. He has been in solitary confinement for about four months. He has a broken leg, a broken hand, can barely see out of one eye, and has possible brain damage. This is the prize for you know, speaking up. He's been accused of waging war against God and spreading corruption on earth, both of which carry the death penalty. This is like your you know, burning witches type of thing. Uh, videos of his torture were leaked on purpose to send a message to his followers. And so, because all of the people that are supposed to be leading this revolution are in prison, it falls upon the Iranians outside of Iran to try to rally international support to the best of their ability. Uh, these are some of the uh, most uh, popular uh, supporters from outside of Iran. Uh, one is Reza Pahlavi, the exiled crown prince of Iran. Another is Masi Alinejad, a journalist and activist. Nazanin Boniadi, an actress. She's in Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Check it out, great show. Uh, also an activist. And Hamid Esmailyun, who is a dentist from Canada and also an activist. A couple weeks ago, there was a security conference in Munich. The Islamic Republic was not invited. And in their place, Reza, Masi, and Nazanin were invited. And they were able to meet with the world leaders to advance the cause of Iranian freedom. This is the Berlin protest rally. This is a picture from October, I think. Uh, there were a series of international protests held in solidarity with the protest and strikes in Iran. This particular protest had about 80,000 attendees, and it was organized by Hamed Esmailyun. So, after the USA assassinated General Soleimani, no relation, Iran responded by blowing up Ukraine International Flight PS752. Uh, Hamid's wife and daughter were on the plane. 
And so he has made it his life mission to achieve justice for his family. And you can see on the left, this is a meme about how it started, and it's him basically on the streets by himself in Toronto protesting. And how it's going is him organizing 100,000 people rallies in Berlin. Uh, so the goal of the protests is to overthrow the Islamic Republic and establish a secular government aligned with woman life freedom. You can see on the left, we have some of the different preferences for government. This is for people who answered the previous question, no, we do not want the Islamic Republic, so what do you want? People said they prefer a presidential republic, a parliamentary republic, constitutional monarchy, a few other things, but the thing that all of those have in common is that they're all secular governments. Personally, I don't have a strong preference. I just want the Islamic Republic gone, and I'm willing to work with anyone who shares that goal. So we're going to talk about how Ethereum and Web3 are helping. First of all, big shout out to Vitalik for helping support our cause. He was one of the you know, earliest supporters, and just like how he was you know, Slava Ukraina on day two of the invasion. So big thanks to V. So one of the most important ways that crypto, Ethereum, Web3 are helping Iranians right now is money. Uh, Iranians started pulling money out of banks uh, at the beginning of the protest, buying dollars, gold, Bitcoin, anything they could get their hands on, really. They did this because they wanted to eliminate the seniorage revenue of the government so that they can't you know, uh, spend money as easily. And they also want to protect themselves from their bank accounts being closed down because if you get caught protesting, oftentimes they'll seize your funds in your banks. And so uh, the most popular cryptocurrency in Iran is USDT Tether on Tron. And they use it because it's cheap, it's easy, and although it is Tron, I still think Ethereum gets some credit there because Tron is basically a fork of Ethereum, so this, you know, Vitalik and crew did all the work. Uh, Justin Sun just helped market it. <clears throat> the, the inflation uh, versus the dollar has been, uh, you know, 50% since Rice, he was president, uh, and it is accelerating. And this isn't actually like CPI inflation. This is like Toman against, you know, dollar. The actual inflation numbers are worse than this. Another way that Web3 is helping Iranians uh, is with digital art NFTs. Um, these are all NFTs that I bought uh, from Iranian women in Iran. Uh, on Christmas this year, I went on a shopping spree. I sent a tweet. I was like, hey, you know, if you know Iranian artists, like tag your friends, I'm going shopping. And got over, I don't know, 1,000 responses. I was only able to buy some of the art. I was astonished how many Iranian artists there were participating in uh, Web3 and, and selling digital art. Um, and it was uh, really cool to be able to purchase this art from them. You know, a little bit of ETH goes a long way in Iran. Uh, one of the people that I remember seeing their art, I remember them pitching me it, I remember looking at it. I don't know what happened, but I didn't buy it. She unfortunately tried to leave the country and go to Belgium, was stopped at the airport, and was never heard from again. So that brings me to another way that Web3 and Ethereum can help Iranians, which is improving and promoting social recovery for wallets. Because it would be cool to be able to support her family by buying more of her art, but I don't know where that money would go or if it's just a dead wallet. Um, talk briefly about some of the sanctions over compliance. My colleagues will fill in the blanks, but I want to focus on this particular one because it served as part of the inspiration for how we have chosen to coordinate. Um, 
one of the uh, you know, Iranian protester supporters, his name is Morteza, he tried to use GoFundMe to do a fundraiser for uh, helping Iranians get network access, VPN vouchers, things like that. And his crowdfunding campaign was shut down by GoFundMe. And it's legal to do what he wanted to do because OFAC actually issued a general license, D2, I'll talk more about it in a second, but uh, GoFundMe didn't want to deal with it or their bank didn't want to deal with it. So they're actually being over compliant with sanctions and just decided to shut them down because it's easier for them. So that's why we have chosen to form Iran Unchained which is a US-based NGO raising funds to free Iran. And we are using crypto-first fundraising tools to avoid bank overcompliance. We are using a Moloch V3 DAO and a series of Gnosis safes to raise money. The founding members of the DAO are about 15 members of the Iranian diaspora. And we are authorized uh, under the OFAC General License E to send up to $500,000 per year to uh, advancing the cause of freedom uh, and other uh, you know, approved activities in Iran. So long as we verify all of the fund recipients and provide the US Treasury with receipts and quarterly reports. So it's mostly a compliance tool. Um, <clears throat> we are trying to fund first and foremost things like newspapers, food, VPNs, Starlinks, ETH conference subsidies, etc. Uh, we will be organizing our first grants uh, in the next week or two uh, as we set up. Um, this is what our website looks like. Uh, and so the idea is that uh, we've done DAO fundraising a couple times. Uh, it's pretty annoying to, for example, raise all the money into a DAO and then basically have to argue about how you spend the money. So we've organized this in such a way that anybody can actually create a grant, which creates a new Gnosis safe multi-sig that has as the sole signer the DAO. And so the only way that money can be spent from that is by spending is through a DAO proposal. And so uh, that gives us you know, the security that we are managing that money and we will allow people to donate to a number of different uh, areas and then as those areas receive funding, we will submit the proposals to send that money to the Iranians. Um, so how Ethereum and Web3 can help more, like I said, better resources for managing social recovery it's probably going to be increasingly important. Um, ZK voting systems, delegated democracy. So ZK voting systems, we are basically building new mm, systems for <laughs> coordinating. Uh, and this is not the type of scenario where privacy is a nice to have. This is the kind of scenario where privacy is absolutely necessary because it's life or death and it's most adversarial context you can imagine. Um, things like delegated democracy are cool too. Uh, there was a little social experiment where mm, the, a lot of the Iranians diaspora and even some in Iran basically just decided to uh, delegate their vote, not that we have a vote or you know a democracy or something, but just socially. Uh, I delegate my vote to the Reza Pahlavi, the cr exiled crown prince. Uh, as, so that he's like our, you know, he, he, recognizing him as your delegate. That's cool to do on Twitter. It's even cooler to do in an actual DAO where we can see what's going on. Um, other ways include things like IPFS, Swarm, and SIA, being able to have immutable documents and being able to run dApps without needing to host them on a centralized server are really, really great. And more ambitiously, we can imagine a future where we have a new government implemented through smart contracts. Uh, I think it would be really fun to one day write the constitutional monarchy smart contract program. And you know, I don't really care who the king is so long as I can write the code <laughs> for the, the monarchy program, you know. 
<laughs> I don't only mean monarchy. It could be whatever republic. I don't care. I'll throw, throw a rage quit in there somewhere. <clears throat> uh, and further, I think one of the most important things that Ethereum is able to provide, it's a culture. And it would be awesome if and when we throw ETH Tehran this decade, it will be the most lit Ethereum conference on the planet. You're all invited. Thank you. Uh, this is a little flag. It's got the lion in the sun from the monarchy and then the inscription on the top and bottom says woman, life, freedom in Farsi. Uh, the current inscription on the flag of the Islamic Republic says like Allah Akbar, you know, on the top. So. Uh, this seemed like a nice mashup of the masculine and feminine aspects of the revolution. So, thank you all. Please connect with Iran Unchained. This is our Twitter, email, and website. Uh, we will be organizing a lot more grants and raising money soon. So, please look out for that. Get in touch if you're interested in contributing. Uh, we're looking for all the help we can get. Thank you.